This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. See the rigid body such as a mere stick or a flywheel is a system of closely packed particles, isn't it? See these equations what we just uh, derived equation A, B, C are applicable to a rigid body. The number of particles in such a body is so large that it is impossible to carry out the summations over individual particles in these equations. Isn't it? It is nothing but the summation of individual particles. But it is very difficult to carry out the summation of individual particles. Since the spacing of the particles is very small, we can treat the body as a continuous distribution of mass. Isn't it? We subdivide the body into n small elements of masses uh, delta m1, delta m2 up to delta mn. The ith element that is delta mi is taken to be located about the point xi, yi and zi. The coordinates of the center of mass are then approximately given by if you consider the body as a continuous body and if you divide the body into you know, n smaller elements of mass like delta m1, delta m2 up to delta mn, then approximately the center of mass is uh, given by sigma delta mxi delta mi into xi. By what? Sigma delta m i. Okay. Similarly, we can consider y as a sigma delta m i y i by sigma delta m i. Z is equal to sigma delta m i z i divided by sigma delta m i isn't it as we make n bigger and bigger each delta m i smaller and smaller and these expressions becomes exact so in that case we denote sums over i by integrals we can represent this uh, summation right you can replace it with the integral sign okay that is uh, delta m i integral of dm and that gives what yes the mass of the system Similarly, we can say delta m i xi xi okay the integral of x dm delta m i y i similarly. integral of uh, y dm and delta m i z i integral of z dm so here m is the total mass of the body the coordinates of the center of mass now are x is equal to 1 by m the coordinates of center of mass x is equal to 1 by m integral of x dm and y is equal to again 1 by m the integral of y dm and z is equal to 1 by m the integral of z dm isn't it so we can represent it using vector expression that is r also by it can be represented as rdm okay so if you choose the center of mass as the origin and again similar to the previous uh, case this rdm will become what zero isn't it yes 
and even this integrations of uh, x dm y dm and z dm the integral of x dm y dm and z dm all will be equal to zero okay see often we have to calculate the center of mass of homogeneous bodies of regular shapes means uh, rings discs spheres rods okay by a homogeneous body we mean that a body with uniformly distributed mass by using symmetry consideration we can easily show that the centers of mass of these bodies lie at the at their geometric centers if it is an uniformly distributed mass okay the body is having a uniformly distributed mass then that center of mass it lies at the geometric centers so here you can uh, take an example of a thin rod as you can see here in this particular figure whose width and breadth or uh, okay radius of the rod okay whose breadth you know breadth width as well as breadth is much smaller than its length isn't it we can see that in this figure so taking the origin to be at the geometric center of the rod and x axis to be along the length of the rod so this is the origin o and this is the geometric center of this rod and the, the axis is along x axis the length is taken along the x axis of the rod and we can say that on account of the reflection symmetry for every element dm of the rod at x there is an element of the same mass dm located okay for every we can see here the mass for every element of of this rod that is if you consider x the mass the same mass is located because it is uniformly distributed so the net contribution of every such pair to the integral and hence the integral x dm itself is zero here if you consider the positive part and here you will consider the negative side of it so if you add overall integral summation of all these masses the net mass that x dm integral will get it as zero that is the center of mass thus the center of mass of a homogeneous thin rod it coincides with the geometric center the same symmetry argument will apply to homogeneous rings disc spheres or even some okay section for all such bodies you will realize that for every element dm at a point x comma y comma z one can always take an element of the same mass at the point minus x comma minus y comma minus z so if the same element here at point x you know at this point we have mass dm again the same mass we can take at the point that is minus x isn't it so that's what they are telling in other words the origin is a point of reflection symmetry for these bodies as a result when we integrate the overall integration sum will become zero okay so now let us consider one uh, simple problem find the center of mass of three particles at the vertices of an equilateral triangle the masses of the particles are 100 g 150 g and 200 g respectively each side of the equilateral triangle is 0.5 meter along so here you can consider an equilateral triangle with the three points with the 100 g 150 and 200 and even the center is c we should calculate this value now the center of mass c that is what we should calculate so we already know the formula for this okay with the x and y axis chosen as shown in this figure the coordinates of point o a and b forming the equilateral triangle are respectively 0,0 Point five comma zero and point two five comma point two five root three. So they have given the masses, and even they have given the sides, isn't it? Point five meter along each side of an equilateral triangle is point five. Yes, point five 
meter long. So if you consider the first point origin, here it is 0 comma 0 and here it is at a distance from here to here. What is the distance? 0.5 because the side of each side of this equilateral triangle is 0.5. So the point A lies at 0.5 comma 0. Now here if you consider point, uh, no, if you consider this point B from uh, y axis it is at a distance of 0.25, half of 0.5. Whereas from uh, x axis its distance is not known. How to get that? We can get that by considering uh, Pythagoras theorem because we know this value that is uh, 0.25 and we know this value that is AB that is 0.5 we can easily get this value isn't it if you consider this point as X so we can write AB square is equal to what BX square plus XA square so this one we know this is 0.5 and BX is the thing that we need to find out and AX we already know 0.25 whole square. So if you perform we get BX is equal to 0.25 root 3. That is what written here. Okay, now we already know the formula to calculate the coordinates that is the center of mass X. It is given by M1 X1 plus M2 X2 plus M3 X3 divided by M1 plus m2 plus m3 so they have given the masses we know the coordinates m1 is 100 x1 what is the value of x1 that is uh, 0 right this is we can consider this one as x1 y1 so x1 is 0 plus m2 is how much m2 is Yes, it is 150 and Y2. X2, M2 is 150 and here you can consider this as X2, Y2. X2 is 0 0.5 and uh, M3 is 200 and X3 is 0.25. So this one is X3, Y3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 so if you simplify this this one is 0 150 into 0.5 is how much 75 200 into 0.25 that is uh, given by 50 divided by 450. This is 50, 75. If you further simplify it using 25, once or seven, we get it as 5 by 18 meters. So similarly, we can calculate the value of y. That is given by M1, Y1 M2, Y2 plus M3, Y3 by M1 plus M2 plus M3. Isn't it? So again, we can calculate Y1 is 0, M2 is 150, Y2 is uh, 0. M3 is 200, Y3 is 0.25 root 3 and again here M1 plus M2 plus M3 is 450. So if this will become 0, this will become 0. 
to simplify it further we get it as uh, root 3 divided by 9 meters that is 1 by 3 root 3 meters okay the center of mass c is uh, shown here in this particular figure you can see it is 5 by 18 1 by 3 root 3 okay